All right, I am with Jen Machen and Stacy Dernan, two fabulous teachers that employ the growth mindset and deliberate practice in their classes. So typically when I come into your room, I can't find you because there's so much going on. <laughs> so can you kind of explain the, the basics of the structure of your class? So today, after receiving their tests, they focus on certain questions that they got wrong. And they work with an expert to really hone in on the mistakes that they made. We want to focus on questions seven and eight. We want you to focus on how to show deliberate practice and hopefully show success before you leave us today. As soon as you cross your name off one of those strands, you can get an expert sign because you're an expert in that strand. And so if you see if somebody's struggling and you or if your up your name is up there and you are struggling, go and find an expert in order to help you get through the challenge. How do you identify an expert? An expert is somebody who shows mastery on a specific problem and they're able to teach it to somebody else. Is that always the same kids? No. Changes it's usually not, right? So how does data help determine who an expert is? Like your score that you get. Mm -hmm. If you get a four or three, you're considered like an ex an expert. You can put six on the outside. So what you noticed is they had that yellow piece of paper, which was their mistake analysis, which um, is a format that we've been using since the beginning of the year. So what type of mistake did you make on this question? Was it a careless error, a conceptual error, error or like you didn't know what to do? Many of them had the expert next to them, and so they were reading and then they were trying to fill in what exactly and pinpoint what that they what mistakes that they made. Because you did six plus three here. So what do you think it is? Yeah. It's important for children to know what they don't know. And I think we've established that environment in here. It's okay to say, I don't know. We're not hiding or avoiding. Do you ever get embarrassed with a one or a two? I don't feel embarrassed because I like to get feedback from my teachers so I can move on that skill. So I think the important piece is practicing it again. Not just saying, oh, I see what I did wrong. No, prove that you've learned from your mistake by now applying it to these three problems. What's a weekend warrior? If you do um, con on weekend or on Friday, you get a weekend warrior. And what is Khan Academy? Khan is a website, a math website, where we work on different skills. Some people are doing sixth grade right now, fifth grade, and all different things. So I think Khan Academy plays a huge role in differentiating and students are working to their ability. Kids, how do, how do they not get frustrated and turned off when it's super hard? Well, they do get they frustrated. They get very frustrated. And that's the best part about the whole thing. <laughs> and that's why the reward in the end is so huge for them because they saw how frustrated they were getting and what they had to do to get uh, that box blue and con and they are just so proud of themselves and you see it. This is deliberate yeah. practice because I used my hints and the videos and I got most of them right. They actually show how many problems it took them to finally get the box blue and what did they do about it along the way. So what happened after you would keep getting them wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong by looking at hints and videos? What started, started to happen? Get it, them right, mm -hmm. which took a little bit of time but still paid off and you can see the progress. And when they see that, it's, it's unbelievable. They just, they know that having that growth mindset and that deliberate practice means success for them. So now, I, we have to see what level we're on. I think we're well beyond four. Are you ready? public is their effort. So through all of these programs, we're allowed to show how many minutes did you do? So somebody who has an, who, who struggles with learning or somebody who learning is very, very easy to could have done the same amount of minutes who could have gone above and beyond in their effort. They might have been working on different things, but we can't tell what they're working on. What we celebrate in here is effort. Expression. So I noticed you used this term, fist of five, and, and I'm holding my hand up, I'm 
Can you explain what that is? So we talk a lot about the learning zone and the performance zone in here. So when you're in the learning zone, that means you are directly being instructed. You're learning something new. And we want to make sure that they are focused and engaged. So in order to assess that, we have a fist to five chime that goes off. And as soon as the kids hear the bell, they either put up a five, a four, a three, two, or a one, depending on how fully engaged they are at that time. So to get them to say, oh wait, I brought to bring myself back without us saying, get back to work yeah. is really important. It's a common excuse for teachers why they can't have classrooms like yours. Because it's too chaotic and we, can, we don't know what's going on, they're fooling around and they're over here and it's a great little tool to, to keep them on track, yeah. keep them honest. Those very quick formative assessments are not really as much for us as they are for them in their own metacognition to say, where am I right now in the learning process? And then what am I going to do about it? Do you think any teacher can implement these stages of deliberate practice? Yes, if they practice it deliberately. <laughs> <laughs>